is that they might be saved. For I bear them record. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And be ignorant of God's righteousness. They went about to establish their own righteousness, not submitting themselves to the righteousness of God. And sometimes when, when, when people want to do things their way, when our religions get so big that, that we, we're, we're Xing God out, we're putting God out in our religion is first, or our traditions are first. They're not even saved no more. In the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16, it says, for the leaders cause the people to go wrong. And those that are led by them are destroyed along with them. Even in chapter uh, 15 of this book of Matthew, he says, let them alone. They be blind leaders leading the blind. And when the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. So you got to watch who you follow. you got to watch who you follow. And if it doesn't line up with God's word, man, put an X by and say, no way. Like I said, if I ever go left field, say, Pastor, we love you. I want to I want to try to minister to you. Say, Pastor, you done lost, you done lost your mind, you done got off track. But if, if, if that's the direction you're still going, Pastor, we can't follow you no more. And then you find you another church. And I'm willing to tell you that. If I get off, if I get off of the Bible. And start, start preaching my own gospel. Start preaching Will Harrison's gospel. Then you find you another church and get the heck out of here. Because I'm going to lead you right to hell. God says, be not deceived. And he's sick and tired of his people being deceived by every wind of doctrine that comes and blows itself by. People all over America and not only America, over Europe and all around the world are being driven by the winds of all these doctrines, all these false teachings trying to turn you away from God's word, trying to turn you away from Jesus Christ. And they have become not only deceitful but anti-Christ. You're still in Matthew 16? He said here, and they, verse 7, and they reason among themselves saying, it is because we have taken no bread. That ain't the reason why Jesus said. He said, look, and I'm just going to paraphrase the, the rest of this. He said, look, remember the 5,000 that we fed? How many baskets did you take up? Do you remember the 4,000 that we fed? How many baskets did you take up? It's right there in your Bible. Then why are you thinking they're talking about bread? And then boop, the light bulb came on. They understood when he said the leaven, the leaven, the doctrine, the teaching of the Pharisees. Beware, beware of false teaching. The Lord is telling you today, be aware of false teaching. Be aware. Be aware. Turn with me to Titus. Titus. Chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Say amen when you get there. Amen. amen. Look what we have verse 10. It says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and what's that word? Deceivers. Deceivers. Especially they of the circumcision. In other words, they of the, <coughs> the, the, this religious sect. Vain talkers and deceivers. People are trying to tell you if you're not in this religion or that religion or this religion, you I don't even tell anybody. I said it before and it bears reiterating. Even Christian, people who claim the religion of Christianity, there are some of them going to hell too. Because it's not the religion of Christianity that takes you to God. It's the relationship you have with God 
through the Christ, through the person of the Christ, through God in his son, Jesus Christ. And if you don't have a personal relationship with him, you're still lost. And that's the word of God. That's the word of God. Write this scripture down. 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. We're not going to turn there. Just write it down. It's a reference. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. It says, people are being driven and tossed with every wind of doctrine, with everything that blows by. People are having itching ears. And they're being deceived. But the worst deception, ladies and gentlemen, is when you deceive yourself. When you deceive, all deception is bad. But when you deceive yourself, well, pastor, how do I deceive myself? James chapter 1, verse 22. The Bible says in James chapter 1, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Then it says, deceiving your own self. How many of you have heard the word of God? Raise your hand. Everybody in here, if you've been under this teaching, all of you. How many of you at this time don't raise your hand? Because I don't want you to embarrass yourself or give yourself away. How many of you don't practice the word of God? You don't live the word of God. You don't do it as you learn it. And if that's you, you have deceived yourself. Because it's one thing to hear the truth and then don't obey it. Jesus said, why call me Lord if you're not going to do what I say? Why? Why say that I'm the Lord of your life, but yet you're following the world. You're following everything else except me, who you say is your Lord. Is the light bulb coming on for somebody? You deceived yourself. Romans chapter 10. I've already said it through religion and ignorance. Sometimes when we just don't have the knowledge, we're ignorant. 2 Timothy, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look with me at verse 13. It says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Not only are they deceiving, but they're being deceived. And when we think that, that we know more than God, and there are people like that, think they know more than God. Well, well, I don't trust that Bible. So you know more than God. Well, the Bible is written by men. Very much so true. But the Bible says, written by holy men. Moved by the Holy Spirit as the Spirit moved upon them. And every word in the Bible, if you're still in, 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 in 2 Timothy chapter 3, look, look with me at verse 16. It says, for all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, for uh, 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 correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. God is trying to equip you through his word. It's like if you're in the army and you're going to go to battle neck, butt neck. When the, when, the, when the United States Army is trying to issue you a uniform, issue you boots, issue you web gear, a, a, a flak vest, a weapon, a, a protective gear, ammunition. They're trying to, end, they're trying to end, issue you everything you need to go into battle and train you in the process. And you say, well, I don't need that. I go into battle with my speedos. <laughs> that's, that's how people deceive themselves. I don't need God's word. I don't need to come to church to be taught to hear the word. 
I can do it myself. And how's that working for you? God has given us things to equip us, but yet we're still deceiving ourselves, fooling ourselves, tricking ourselves. Go with me to, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 18. Watch what he says here. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Verse 18. He says, let no man do what? Deceive you. Deceive who? Himself. Deceive who? Himself. Deceive who? Himself. 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 Let no man deceive himself. Women, that means you too. Mankind. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. In other words, if you, there are some people who think they're smarter than God. They're, they're, as the Bible says in the Old Testament, every man wants to be wise in his own eyes. Every man wants to do his own thing. Every man wants to. If you think you got it all together and you're so smart and you're smarter than God, you don't need God because you're so in. Uh, and, and, Man, a lot of people who are college educated, not you, but people you know, who are college educated think they're smarter than God. They think they're too, too intelligent to believe in a God that they can't see. They do. They think that. Well, I believe in science. Well, God created science, not head. <laughs> but it says, let no man deceive himself. If you think you got it all together, you better put a check there. If you think you're smarter than God, you better put a check there. And put a check in your spirit and check. Because you're not smarter than God. So don't deceive yourself. Don't talk yourself into getting out from under the, the covenant of God and out from under the blessings of God and out from under the knowledge of God. Oh, you ought to be at Wednesday night Bible study. We're learning so much in, in the book of uh, Proverbs about the wisdom and the knowledge and, and the understanding of God and how much God wants you to have his wisdom and even some of the world's wisdom in the sense of those, those things that make us better in this world, but not the mentality of the world. Confessing yourself to be wise. Romans chapter 1, go there. Confessing themselves to be wise. Verse 21 and 22. Look what it says. Because then, watch this. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They thought they were smarter than God. That's why they call them professors. They professed themselves to be wise. That's what that, that movie was all about. You know, God's not dead. The professor was trying to make Christian people, Christian students, reject the idea of God or the, the, the truth of God's word because he had a bad experience when he was young. And so he was mad at God, so he wanted everybody to be mad at God. And one wise young man who was really wise, God used him to even turn that professor's heart back to God when he saw the truth. Because the Bible says when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You ever heard that term, an educated fool? There are a bunch out there with master's degrees and doctorates. Educated fools who think they can do it all without God. But God says for us to do this. 
You'll find it in your Bible. We're not going to turn there, but in, in uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says to study to show yourself approved unto God. And you being a workman who need not be ashamed, you will rightly divide the word of truth. That's why I study so much. So that, that when I stand before you to teach you, I can rightly divide God's word and teach you the precepts, the, 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 the concepts, and, and the letter and the, and the wisdom of God. So that you can grab hold to it for who? For yourself. And then from this teaching, you ought to want to read your Bible for yourself. You ought to want to study your Bible for yourself. You ought to want to be under God's teaching as much as you possibly can. I heard Brother Scott today, this morning, you know, telling y'all about Sunday school and about Wednesday night Bible study. But yet, if you got to work on Wednesday night, I understand. Go to work if you have to. But if you don't, you ought to want to be under God's word, receiving God's word, growing more in God's word and in his grace. Because if you're not growing, I was singing a song with little Sophia this morning. Read your Bible and pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible and pray every day. And you grow, grow, grow. But if you don't read your Bible and pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. If you don't read your Bible and pray every day, then you shrink, shrink, shrink. And she got it. And if that little, little seven, eight, or seven year old can get it, why can't us adults get it? Why can't us adults get it? If a seven year old can understand that, and she said, Pastor, see, I got another Bible. And she showed me her Bible and she showed me scripture. She's already remembering and, and highlighting in her Bible. Seven years old because she wants to grow. But us adults, we're too wise in our own eyes. We know more than God. So we think. When your foolish heart is dark, the Bible says, professing yourself to be wise, you become fools. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by outside sources, by religious sources, by the devil, and definitely don't be deceived by your own self. God gave me this message for y'all today because he's tired of his people being deceived and listening to all the stuff out there. The Bible says in Philippians and Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the whole armor of God so you can be able to withstand the wiles, the tricks of the devil, the deceptions of the devil. But you got to put it on. You got to put it on. And to put it on, you got to get in his word to know what the armor of God is. If I was to ask you all right now, name me the armor of God. How many of you can name all the portions of the armor of God out of Ephesians chapter 6? I'm not going to put you on and put that on you. But I learned a way to do it for me because it doesn't give it in the order that, that I give it, but I start from the head and work my way down. That's when I was a fitness instructor. That's how I used to teach my students how to, how to work out. Start in one area and work your way down. Start at your neck and work your way down. See, the Bible says put on the helmet of salvation. No, but no, but no, you're saved. Then it says put on the breastplate of righteousness. Not your righteousness, but God's righteousness. Because the right man's righteousness is that's filthy rag, the Bible says. But when you're in Jesus Christ, he who knew no sin became sin for you, that you might become the righteousness of God in him, in Christ Jesus. So put on the breastplate of righteousness. Protect your heart. Guard your heart. Have your loin skirt about with truth. That's your, your waistline and your groin area. Have it girded about with truth. Walk in the truth of God. And his word is truth. Don't want to just do your own thing. Have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That means be ready to, to, 
wherever you go to carry the word of God, carry the gospel, that, that you might be able to bring some people out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And then he says, take the shield of faith so you can quench, that's where I'm getting that, so you can quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. When the devil is shooting at you, you can quench those things, those, those attacks, because you're walking by faith and not by sight. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. So you gotta walk by faith. Said so the just shall live by faith. And where do we start? It's from faith to faith. And then last but not least, he said take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. So you can cut the devil asunder. Because that's how you defeat him. You defeat him with God's word. You don't have to come up with something clever saying, something come back. I remember when we were young, you know, I don't know about y'all, but in the black community, we used to play the dozen. You know, you, you, your mama fatter than my mama and all this kind of stuff. We you played, we called it the dozen back then. And then you had to come back with another saying, you know, God don't want you to have to come back with something except his word. Amen. When the devil comes at you, you pull out the word of God. And you say like Jesus said, said in the wilderness, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Jesus cut him up with the word, and the word, and the devil and the Bible says that we draw a line to God, James chapter 4, and we submit ourselves to God and draw a line to God. In other words, draw closer and closer to God. Well, how are you going to draw closer to God if you're not in his word, knowing, reading the love letter that he's written to you? It's like when I'm on the way in basic training, I would, but Sister Harrison would write love letters to me. And I read them. And they sustain me and strengthen me. And I would write love notes back to her. I mean love letters back to her. I didn't write a lot, so she get a little one page short letters from me. <laughs> but I still would express my love. And God is expressing his love to us through his word. And with his word, he equips us. He says, draw close to me. Draw close to me. Some of you young couples out there, you want to, you draw close to one another, draw close to God. Even more so to that person that you're drawing close to. Because God will never leave you or forsake you. That person might. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in Last scripture, we close. Psalms 119 and 11. David wrote this and he said, Lord, I hide your word in my heart so I won't sin against you. Put God's word in you. Jesus said in John, he said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you It has to be in you. Because if it's not in you, you can and will be deceived. And God said, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, to the flesh you're going to reap. But if you sow to your spirit, to your spirit you will reap and gain all the benefits of God and all that's in his word for you. You receive that?